In this section, we will discuss a thermodynamic uh, definition of piezoelectric effect, which will be very useful for uh, uh, understanding uh, symmetry uh, relations, uh, which are very important for piezoelectric effect and are also going to give us a, a good background for uh, understanding uh, coupling between uh, uh, not only electrical mechanical, but also uh, electrical mechanical, thermal, uh, magnetic, uh, and uh, uh, other properties, uh, which uh, in turn are uh, important for applications. Uh, before we do that, uh, what I would like to do is uh, to give to just to facilitate the discussion, give us a very uh, uh, simple and qualitative uh, definition of a piezoelectric effect. Uh, uh, which will, we will then uh, expand and uh, give it uh, more rigorously with the thermodynamic uh, definition. So uh, what is uh, the piezoelectric effect? Well, in some materials, if you apply electric field on them, uh, they will deform and uh, that relationship is uh, uh, linear. And this is very important because there is also quadratic relationship, which is not piezoelectricity. The constant of proportionality is called piezoelectric coefficient and the linearity uh, of this relationship means that piezoelectric coefficient itself is not field dependence. However, for a, a material to be piezoelectric, there has to be uh, the other relation uh, between uh, mechanical and electric uh, uh, variables. Uh, this time, uh, we relate stress with the charge density or dielectric displacement. Uh, and the constant of uh, uh, proportionality is again called uh, piezoelectric coefficient. And it turns out that these two piezoelectric coefficients are exactly the same. They are strictly same. Uh, same, and we will be able to prove that uh, using a thermodynamic uh, approach. Uh, so uh, uh, as a graphical uh, representation, we have here field, which is either uh, electric field or a pressure, and here response, which is either strain or dielectric displacement or charge density, and the relationship between them uh, can go either this way or this way. I have arbitrarily chosen here uh, uh, expansion. I haven't uh, defined whether I'm applying positive or negative voltage on uh, which side. And here for a compressive voltage, I have uh, uh, put positive charge here, a negative charge here. I could have done inverse. This is completely arbitrarily done. Uh, uh, so that relationship uh, can also go in this way, but importantly, it is uh, linear. Now, uh, uh, there, there are several implications of uh, these uh, 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 ways, uh, how, how I have drawn these pictures. Uh, first of all, uh, for this compressive press, I could have put here minus and here uh, plus. Uh, and uh, also I could have applied the pressure in uh, this direction. Uh, as I'm doing here. And the question now that I would like you to think about is uh, if I apply pressure perpendicular to these faces, so starting with this uh, case as a, as a given, uh, if I put now compressive pressure on perpendicular faces, am I going to get here negative charge if here is positive and whether this charge here will be uh, in absolute units uh, equal to this one or will be smaller as I have uh, drawn it here. Try to think about that. And also try to think what will happen uh, if I rotate this material by 100 degrees. What kind of charges would I have here and uh, here? Uh, what, would, what would happen? Uh, uh, that will help us later on understand uh, symmetry uh, uh, requirements for piezoelectricity, if you think uh, about that a little bit here. Also, the fact that piezoelectric coefficient may depend on how we apply uh, electrical field, electric field and forces uh, on the sample uh, means that it is a tensor. Uh, and we will discuss that it is, in fact, a third rank tensor. And we will discuss that later in some 
in some details. I also want to uh, emphasize here that uh, I will sometimes call uh, the displacement, it's dielectric displacement, dielectric displacement, and I will sometimes just say displacement and you should understand from the context that it is dielectric displacement and not mechanical uh, uh, displacement, but that, that, that should be uh, clear. So now let's go to this uh, thermodynamic uh, definition of piezoelectric coefficient. We start with the material that we assume to be uh, deformable uh, mechanically, polarizable electrically. And uh, uh, let's see what kind of uh, reversible change uh, du in the internal energy uh, uh, we can have. So. Uh, we have a material, uh, it has its internal energy. Uh, it can be deformed by mechanical fields, uh, by can, can be polarized by electric field. And uh, we would like to see what is the change in internal energy when we do this work on the sample. Remember that uh, uh, this is nothing else but uh, force times delta L that you know very well from mechanics. So we are doing some mechanical work if we have force acting on an object over distance L. Uh, that's, that's just that. Uh, so that's mechanical energy. Uh, this is electrical energy and this is uh, thermally related energy and they all uh, cause a change in internal energy uh, of the sample. Now it's very difficult to work with uh, uh, entropy uh, uh, so I, I should define this, this temperature, entropy, stress, uh, uh, strain, electric field, and the dielectric uh, displacement. And it is very difficult to work experimentally with the entropy, uh, strain, and dielectric displacement uh, as independent variables. Uh, much more friendlier would be to work with uh, uh, temperature, pressure, and electric field. And we can uh, change uh, that by defining uh, uh, a new uh, free energy, new uh, energy thermodynamic uh, function, uh, Gibbs free energy in this case, uh, which we define this way. Uh, so we take internal energy and we subtract from it uh, this term uh, here, which are uh, thermal uh, electrical uh, electric, uh, uh, sorry, mechanical uh, and electric uh, uh, energy related terms. And uh, uh, this trick of changing the independent variables is called in mathematics and thermodynamics Legendre uh, transformation, uh, which uh, will allow us to go from this set uh, to this set of independent variables. So if you find uh, now, uh, uh, full differential of uh, Gibbs free energy and use this expression for du, we will get uh, this expression here for Gibbs free energy, uh, which is in a, in, in, in a form that we, that we want with uh, those uh, independent variables. Now, since uh, free energy is a function of temperature, uh, pressure, and uh, uh, electric field, uh, that means that uh, entropy, strain, and uh, uh, dielectric displacement must also be uh, functions of temperature, pressure, and uh, electric field. And so we will use that now to find the differentials for these three functions. Uh, and uh, for uh, nicely behaving thermodynamic functions, this is uh, simple that the differential is equal uh, change in the temperature times first uh, uh, partial derivative of entropy with temperature with taking uh, uh, pressure and electric field as uh, constants and uh, similar for these two other uh, 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 terms. And we can do that uh, uh, for a strain and for dielectric uh, displacement. Now it turns out that uh, each of these partial derivatives is in fact uh, a property of the of the material, and uh, let's first see those that are here on diagonal, which uh, relate uh, uh, 
variables of the same kind. So here we have a pressure and strain. So both of them are mechanical. There is no coupling with other types, electrical, uh, electric and uh, thermal. So what is this? Well, this is just Hooke's law. Uh, strain is equal to compliance times pressure. And then derivative of the strain with the pressure is equal to compliance. So that's simple. Uh, this one here is heat capacity. And this one here uh, should be dielectric permittivity. So permittivity, uh, the dielectric displacement is equal kappa times electric field, where kappa is the electric permittivity, kappa is equal the divided uh, 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 derivative of D with uh, electric field. So uh, we understand what are these. Now let's see the mixed variables. Let's look at uh, uh, this one here and this one here. So I will mark them like this. And now you remember from our definition of the piezoelectric effect, what is a converse piezoelectric effect? Converse piezoelectric effect, uh, effect relates strain with electric field, uh, which means that the derivative of uh, strain with electric field is equal to converse piezoelectric coefficient. And that's uh, exactly what we have here. So I've written here uh, converse piezoelectricity. And uh, here we just have that, uh, you remember our direct piezoelectric effect, and that's, that's what, we, uh, what we have here. So uh, mixed electrical and mechanical uh, variables uh, give us piezoelectric effect. Uh, there are other interesting effects. Uh, one of them is here, change of dielectric displacement or polarization with the temperature, that's so-called pyroelectric effect. And you can show that it is uh, equivalent to uh, electrocaloric uh, uh, caloric effect here. And finally, we have uh, what is called a piezocaloric effect. And this one here, which you are familiar with, this is just a thermal expansion where you have that you relate uh, strain with a change of the temperature and this is thermal expansion. Uh, so we have these uh, uh, equivalence of uh, different uh, effects uh, which we can uh, show uh, uh, thermodynamically, which we are going to do next, we will show that uh, these coefficients are thermodynamically exactly the same, that they have to be uh, exactly uh, the same. So let's, let's do that. Uh, for this, uh, we will use so-called Maxwell uh, uh, relations. Uh, Maxwell relations, you are probably familiar with your thermodynamic or statistical physics courses, or even in a calculus. Uh, so I repeat here uh, what we have said before. Uh, I take here definition of the converse and the direct piezoelectric effect. And now I want to show that this is exactly strictly equal uh, to, uh, to this. So we start with the converse piezoelectricity. Um, and we now look what is strain. Well, we find out that strain is uh, this, so I can take this, put it here, and get uh, the, uh, uh, this term here. These are Maxwell uh, relations. I find out that the second derivative of G uh, with respect to uh, electric field and stress is piezoelectric, uh, converse piezoelectric coefficient. But I also know that for uh, thermodynamic functions, nicely behaved functions in general, uh, the order of uh, uh, derivative is uh, not important. So I can first uh, take uh, derivative with respect to electric field and then with the pressure. So these two must be equal. And now I look, what is this? Uh, derivative of G with respect to electric field. Well, that's D, uh, the electric displacement. 
and this is nothing else but direct piezoelectric effect. And therefore we prove that direct piezoelectric effect must be exactly equal uh, to the, uh, to the uh, converse piezoelectric effect. Uh, I am writing here uh, three indices for piezoelectric coefficient. Uh, that is because uh, uh, strain has two indices. Uh, electric field is a vector, has one index. Uh, same uh, thing here. And therefore, uh, the piezoelectric coefficient must have uh, three indices. Uh, that means that it is a rank of the third uh, order. Uh, here we are always writing which terms we are keeping constant. Uh, it's uh, uh, temperature, which is important. And uh, usually when we write these tensorial equations, we don't uh, do that. It is uh, assumed that we are doing measurements under uh, isothermal conditions. If conditions are not isothermal, we would actually have here additional terms such as uh, thermal uh, uh, expansion and which also gives strain and uh, and, and, and so on. Uh, so when we want to see a pure piezoelectric effects, uh, then we, we keep temperature constant and we keep uh, uh, um, all these other terms uh, zero or uh, constants. Uh, in many cases, I will drop these indexes, indices uh, when uh, uh, they are not essential. Uh, but we will discuss their meaning, their physical meaning, how you can relate them with the orientation of the sample, with the orientation of the forces that you are applying on the sample. Uh, it is actually quite important, essential to understand this. However, uh, I will give you uh, uh, some examples uh, and uh, those will be enough to understand what's happening in the piezoelectricity and to follow these courses uh, if you are not already familiar with the uh, uh, tensorial uh, uh, notation and uh, 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 use, use of uh, tensors. Uh, so uh, finally, as a sort of a summary, I would like to give you uh, this, um, uh, to repeat uh, this, uh, uh, one of these previous slides, uh, and would like to ask you that you uh, derive uh, this equivalence of uh, piezoelectric and uh, pyroelectric and electrocaloric uh, coefficients using Maxwell uh, relationships, even though I have done it uh, and showed it here. Try to do it yourself. Uh, I think it's very instructive and you will uh, remember it better and uh, understand better what's uh, happening. And you can also, uh, for this uh, for this pair of functions, uh, uh, do, the, do the same. So we have this equivalence for off-diagonal uh, terms where we mix uh, uh, mechanical fields and uh, uh, thermal responses or uh, uh, thermal and mechanical or uh, uh, mechanical and electrical, electrical uh, responses uh, and uh, functions. And we have uh, these that are, uh, and we have these that are on a diagonal uh, where, the, where there is no this mixing, so there are no equivalent uh, terms. Uh, so try to work this, uh, these uh, Maxwell uh, relationships uh, your, yourself and also this one, if you can. Uh, so uh, this will conclude uh, this section.